What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical average American here today to react and learn about weird and fun Norwegian sayings. Uh, this one, I'm thinking, would, will be very, very, well, interesting and funny. Because sayings, well, sayings are actually something from language to language that is hard to convey sometimes because they have such specific cultural meanings. But, and, you know, <laughs> I already have enough trouble as it is uh, pronouncing Norwegian words and saying Norwegian words. So maybe, maybe this video is going to have like Norwegian version of the saying and the American translation or English translation. So it should all be pretty entertaining and funny. Um, like if I, if I Google some American sayings real quick, just real quick before the video, like piece of cake, put lip, put lipstick on a pig, <laughs> break a leg, knock on wood. It's not rocket science, break a bill. Yeah, <laughs> you know, some of that stuff might sound kind of strange to people who aren't American. And I, I anticipate a similar experience right now for me. So let's take a look. All right, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys already know that I'm Norwegian. I've lived in Norway my entire hey. life and I speak Norwegian as my main language. And over the years, I've learned that there's a lot of quotes slash sayings slash I don't even know that we use that don't really make any sense <laughs> to other people oh. from other countries. Okay, I, I was a little afraid of this. Like, surely it will make some sense. Does it really make no sense to, if you're not Norwegian? Other languages, which is why I thought it would be fun to do this video. So the first saying is Va arivayen, which is directly translated into what's in the road. And that does not make any sense. I do realize that, but it basically means what's in the road. Oh, she's right. <laughs> I can't even imagine what that means. Does it mean like, I'll try to guess. It means, look out where you're going. Is what's wrong? Or is anything wrong? Something like that. I don't really understand why. Well, what, so it means what's wrong or is anything wrong? That kind of makes sense. Cause if you're saying what's in the road, you're saying something's wrong. So it means what's wrong? I don't know. <laughs> I always say what's in the road, but it's just the way it is. The next one is ta de helt piano, which is directly translated into take it all piano. And now that I think... Wow. Okay. So these direct translations actually don't make sense. Take it all piano. Does that mean take, take everything? Because pianos are big. It's like take everything. Like, including the piano. Think about it, it's very strange. <laughs> you can kind of get a sense of it though, you know, because if you play the piano quite chill, you get like this good feeling, you know? But ta det helt piano basically means that you're gonna take it chill or take it chill. Take it chill. I'm sp oh, you're gonna, you're gonna chill out. You're gonna take it chill or like be calm or something? Chill out? I think, I think that's what she's saying. Because pianos are like really soothing and calming. <laughs> Is that what it means? Speaking too fast here, I can't even get my words out properly. I guess you could also translate it to take it easy or just take, just be chill, you know? Just okay. like imagine this slow piano music playing in the background and you get the point of taking it piano. Maybe. Okay, okay. Um. So what was the phrase again? You're gonna take it feeling. A sense. And now that I think about it, it the way it is. The next, next one is Ta de helt piano. Ta de helt piano. All right, chill out, take it easy. All right, I like it. And you get the point of taking it piano. Maybe some of you guys have a similar saying where you live. If you do, please let me know below. The next one is Costa Shurta, in which you can trans. Wait, Costa Shurta? Oh, please let me know below. The next one is Costa Shurta, in which. Costa shirt. Which you can translate into something like cost a shirt, I guess. It basically means that something is super expensive. So if what? I were to go shopping and I wanted an item and I okay. realized the price was super high, I would probably say and then costa shorta. Okay, I would never say that, but yeah, you get the point. Okay. <laughs> I don't really use these kinds. 
You so you say this when you see something that's like way too expensive and you want to like be funny or say a saying about it. Kinds of expressions, but you know some people do. And if you ever go to Norway, you might hear someone say that. And if you're not okay. from here, you probably wouldn't understand what it meant until yeah. now. So I got you. No, I, I I still don't really understand. Next up on my list is Katta is ekin. Which Kata is second. Which is directly translated to cat in the backpack, or <laughs> cat in a sack, or cat. That reminds me of an American ex uh, saying. Cat in the bag. The cat's in the bag. That means it's a sure thing. That it's definitely going to happen. For sure. The cat's in the bag. Is that, is that what this is? This is like cat in the backpack, though. It is too cat in the backpack or cat in a sack or cat in a no it's actually a backpack because second is backpack okay. so it's a cat in your backpack and it basically means that you get something completely different than what you actually expected or ordered or whatever so oh wow yeah that's not that's not at all like the american saying cat in the bag cat in the backpack in norwegian <laughs> means something completely different. Interesting though, so you got something that's completely different than what you intended? Say you order something from Wish. This is a perfect example actually. You order something from Wish, you have a certain expectation, and when it arrives, it's nothing like what you expected, okay. most likely. Okay. Yeah, and that okay. is when you would use the phrase Katta is ekken. I don't think that there is an American equivalent to that. Getting something that is completely not like what you thought or what you intended. Hmm. Interesting. Because the item you got is cut dissecting. It's not anything like what you could have imagined. <laughs> All right, the next one is quite fun. It is Ovara mit i smörje. Ovara mit i smörje. Oh. What? Legend. All right, the next one is quite fun. It is Ovara mitt i smörje. Smörje? It is directly translated to to be in the middle of the butter eye. I actually don't know <laughs> if you call it the butter eye in English. The butter eye? In the middle of the butter eye? What is a butter eye? What does that mean? Butter eye? But imagine making porridge and you put butter in the middle. In Norway we call that smörje, which is directly translated to butter eye. It makes sense if you have a round bowl. Oh. This is not... This concept doesn't even exist in America. Uh, but I can see, like, the butter is in the middle of the bowl and it looks like an eyeball. Butter, <laughs> butter. We just don't make porridge in America, for one thing. So I've never really seen this before. But <laughs> this one is like the most cultural difference so far, I think. And you have a little chunk of butter in the middle, you know? The butter eye. It okay. basically means that you've put yourself in the center where an event is happening or taking place. I don't know huh. if that makes sense to you guys. I actually find this really hard to explain. Uh, so I'm sure if you want to know more about it, you can Google it because I'm, I'm realizing here that I suck. Okay, so you're putting yourself in the center, like the butter. <laughs> it's funny because this Norwegian saying is based off a Norwegian like f uh, expression for butter in a Norwegian food or porridge. So it's like, there's many levels of Norwegian-ness to this. And it means putting yourself in the center of an event. Does that mean you're the center of attention? Or you are physically in the center of what's happening? Like the center of a dance party or something. I don't know, this is a hard one. Explaining this. Okay, so next up is Omöteveggen. A motivagen? A motivagen? It's translated to meeting the wall. I guess you can use this in English as well and people would understand what you're saying. It meeting the wall? Well, I don't know if I could even guess what that means. If you're meeting the wall, you're crashing into the wall or you're talking to a wall. 
in in America, you could say an expression, a saying called, it's like I'm talking to the wall. And that would mean it's like you're talking to nobody. It's like the person is not speaking or interacting with you at all, and they're not trying. That's, I, I don't know if that has anything to do with this, but apparently we're talking to a wall, so. The wall? I guess you could use this in English as well, and people would understand what you're saying. It basically means that you've had a lot of stress and negative negativity building up, and you've basically hit a wall. And you're pretty much all burnt out. Oh, okay, like hit a wall. In, in America, we'd say like maybe you hit the wall, which means you're done, you're, you're, you're tapped out, over, tired. Uh, okay, okay, this one makes a little sense to me. Tea building up and you've basically hit a wall and you're pretty much all burned out. Okay. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going through this with this entire COVID-19 situation and everything happening in the world right now. So if you've hit a wall, if you have Mötbeggen, you gotta relax, take a breath, take a few steps okay. back. Think okay. about what you want with your life and think about all the happy things in your life. Okay, I like this saying. Okay, like having a saying for like hitting a wall and and like being over something and tired and that that seems useful to have that saying. That's the best advice I have for you right now. And if you ever need someone to talk to, I'm here for you. Just feel free to send me DMs anywhere really. I have all my social oh, media wow. links below. And yeah, I hope you hear my message here. Over to the next one. The Copet Lis for my. This one is really hard to translate into English, but I guess I would say something like a light just came to your mind or came to your brain. I Huh. Yeah. I, this is something that an American would understand. Like we'd almost we would almost say like that we had a light bulb moment, like a light coming on in your head. That's actually something that happens in cartoons. Like they'll show a light bulb going off on top of their head to show that they've had an idea or they have thought of something. So this this actually sounds like something we actually have a concept of in America. Light just came to your mind or came to your brain. I don't know. If you imagine a light bulb and the light bulb just chung, glows, that's what it is. It means that you got a good idea, something just ping. I'm just gonna keep on doing that. Bing, bing, bing. <laughs> okay, this is the first one that I think is the same in Norway. And it's the, the same as in America. When the light bulb comes on in your head, means you've had an idea. It's the same. Wow. Everyone's seen this symbol with the light bulb just going yes. ding if you have yes. an idea. So it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. do one more before I end this video. This one is quite funny as well. Som sil i tonne. Som sil i tonne. Sil is actually a type of fish. So it basically means fish in a barrel. I don't really know what oh. seal is in English, but it's a fish. So we'll just... Fish in a barrel is actually a saying in America. It's it's called fish in a barrel. Actually, it's shooting fish in a barrel. And it means something is very, very easy. Very, very easy to do. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Because, uh, if you have a bunch of fish in a barrel and you're shooting them with like a gun, it's very, very easy. It's like not even fair. So I don't know if that's exactly what the Norwegian version is like. In a barrel. I don't really know what sil is in English, but it's a fish. So we'll just stick with fish for now. So it's fish in a barrel. And it basically means that it's super crowded. You've put yourself in a situation with a lot of people all close to you. All the trains in Norway are like this and you feel like a fish in a barrel. Hmm. I don't know if this is exactly the same. No, I'm gonna say this isn't, I get it. I totally get it. Fish in a barrel means crowded, but an American almost would sooner say like rats in a cage as crowded. Fish in a barrel, fish in a barrel means you are vulnerable or easy in America. So this is a little different. It's fascinating how similar the wording is, 
but it is different in Norway. Errol, why is that word so hard to say? But thanks to people keeping their distance these days, I actually haven't felt being a fish in a barrel in quite <laughs> some time now, which is good. Okay. So I'm really glad people are following the COVID-19 advice. Actually, we have this thing in Norway now that if you go to the store to shop groceries, there's like these tapes on the ground that tells you that you have to keep one meter distance so when All you're right. in the checkout waiting to pay for your groceries you actually have to keep one well when was this made two years ago okay makes sense one meter distance which i really enjoy because i really don't like being a fish in a barrel <laughs> and yeah you guys that was it that was all the norwegian sayings for now if you would like a part two please let me know down below in the comments i also hope you enjoyed this video i quite enjoy making these types of norwegian videos where i teach you guys about my language i know that a lot of you guys are interested as well i get yeah. messages daily from people wanting to learn norwegian and i mean i'm not an expert i start I started learning this language as soon as I took my first breath on this planet, so I don't know. It is what it is. <laughs> but anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit the like button. All my social media links are listed in the description. Okay. Wow. I enjoyed this. I really like this kind of stuff. This was by Sunny, and I liked it. I gotta give that a like. You know, I knew this was gonna kind of happen, where even with sayings, even when you translate them to English, or I'm guessing if you translated English sayings to Norwegian, they don't make literal sense word for word. There's some kind of like deeper meaning. I mean, that's what a saying is. It's part of the fun of it. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't expect so many of these to just make so little sense to me. A lot of these sayings just don't exist in Amer in America, which, not surprising, different cultures. And I guess the funny thing was, one or two of these sayings were similar ideas, similar to sayings in America. And the light bulb thing about thinking in a light bulb, that was exactly the same. So that was kind of a refreshing, nice mix. And it's almost, it's always just fun to like learn about sayings in different cultures, like Norway, because it tells you like a little bit about the culture, what they have a saying for, is something that Norwegians have thought about enough or are concerned about enough that they are like, we need a saying for this. We need a saying for when we feel overcrowded or exhausted. So I, I, that's just fun to learn about. Um, are there any interesting comments on this? Piano makes sense for quiet. Yeah, that expression with the piano as being calming, that did make sense. Um, what else we have here? People, basically, everyone just likes the video. <laughs> I liked this video. Okay. Most of these comments are just like how great the video was, which is true. All right, I liked this video. I, I learned something today. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, stuff in Norway I've never seen, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.